Tyler, is Paris winning? Mr. Macron would like that. Is Paris doing better as a destination city? It is for sure. If you look at the tourism numbers after, of course, uh, you know, such a, a long run of terrorism incidents, uh, it's bounced back. Uh, it's not the most beautiful day here uh, today, I have to admit. Mr. Macron is not winning on the infrastructure front. It took about 90 minutes in from Charles de Gaulle. Once you get into the city, though, um, so many weekend papers across Europe, Tom, were talking about you know, the move to Paris. And um, certainly from, uh, you know, from <clears throat> Financial institutions, you know, whether it's hedge funds uh, and and many others, uh, and you know, everyone is sort of pointing that this is going to be probably the one city that is going to really singularly win right. after Brexit. The suits and ties of New York and London are all wound up about the future of London. I would say, Monocle, your staff is more wired up on what people actually want to do. Do they actually want to leave the city of London? No, I don't think they do want to leave. I think that people want to stick around. Uh, they want to be, but they want to be part of a winning team. I think that's the, the big component. And when you see a lot of businesses, when you see your colleagues heading for the door, or, and this is, you know, we've touched on this before uh, over the summer, when there is an evaporation of people applying to come into advertising agencies, you know, Britain likes to talk about its creative economy. Um, and suddenly when you don't have graduates coming in, that's a problem. People look elsewhere. Okay, talk to me about pop, because we, we need to make a music edu musical education for Tom Keen, Tyler. So in this fantastic edition, you also talk to Christine and the Queens. Now, she's French. Do, do people of pop actually bring the soft power to the country? Yeah, for sure. And that's it's a big component of what we look at. One of the reasons, or a couple of the reasons, why France did so well this year. Um, and, and we had to take the measure of, of, of course, uh, Christine and the Queens. And, and Tom, if you've got time, it's a long week ahead of you. But for the weekend, um, I would suggest to probably download a couple of videos and see what she's up to. Um, but it's, it, it's a real sensation in terms of what she's been able to deliver uh, globally. I mean, this is not just isolated to a francophone story. This is truly international. The other component, okay, though, the is when we look at soft power, it's... Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say the U.S. is not doing great, right? You have them at number nine with a red arrow going down, Tyler, which means that they're actually losing soft power, and you say they're, they're squandering its soft power wins. Yeah, well, uh, sorry, Christina, you broke up. I've, I've, I just, I didn't, I didn't get that question, sorry. Number nine, the U.S. squandering its soft power, Monocle says. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for sure. And this is this is across a variety of things. You know, Tom was sort of referencing Harper's Bazaar, a great U.S. magazine uh, and, and certainly a very respected fashion outlet. But <clears throat> if you look globally, and this is the comparison, New York versus Paris right now, when you look at international brands, international fashion brands, uh, this is a story which is dominated by the French and it's also in the French owning Swiss brands and Italian brands. If you sort of think of your sort of day to day experience, Think back to a couple of years ago, the power that, you know, many years ago, the power that the Gap had. Then you had the power of, of Abercrombie and Fitch. We've seen probably Victoria's Secret take a bit of a stumble as well. The, the U.S. is not playing in the same style arena that it used to in terms of touching people's lives you know, day right. in, day out. Yes, there are big delivery brands like Amazon doing it, but you don't have the power that you have in, in, in a city like France with global ownership of brands. Tyler, this is absolutely crucial then. And from your point, a synthesis maybe of what the elite are doing, what they're thinking, what they're actually doing with their money, fit in the Americans right now. Is it a one-off wrapped around the President of the United States, or do you sense a real seismic change of where the United States fits in to the aesthetic of the world? Uh, you know, there's, there's one thing, and it's a great question, because I think there is still a drive, there is still an agenda set probably on both coasts, but probably more the U.S. West Coast. Um, you know, whether we look at film, I think certainly uh, the role that, that pop culture, uh, whether it's on the small screen via Netflix or Amazon, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that certainly has an influence. But actually, I thought where you were going, Tom, was, was the bigger issue. I've sort of noticed probably in the last, certainly the last 18 months, the first time when I've really um, been speaking to American friends who've been living in Japan or living in America for the first time, you would have spoken to them five years ago, 
they, you know, they were never going to give up their passport. You know, right. I've probably met three people now in the, in the span of the last six, seven weeks who said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go with my Dutch passport or I'm just going to have a Swiss passport. I, I don't want to have a U.S. passport uh, anymore. And I mean, that's that's a serious shift. I mean, that's something I never ex thought I would experience right. in my lifetime. Tyler, you mentioned Chengdu and your new uh, issue. Tell us at the margin what you see out of China. We speak to economists, we speak to sell-side retail of the importance in every conversation of China at the margin. Is China at the margin now or are they going to pull back with a trade war? No, I think that uh, I think China will power ahead. I think it's it's interesting when you look at the importance of China, Tom, when it comes to luxury. I mean, whether it's a third of, of some com uh, companies' businesses, you know, it does, is it approaching 20 percent for others? But it is absolutely crucial. And I think the bigger point, though, is also the Chinese out in the world. You know, it's not you know the, the story is not just about, of course, China purchase in country, um, but it's two streets away from here. It's one street away from your bureau here in Paris, um, up at Gallery Lafayette. That that global spending power, the Chinese being out um, in, in the world is, um, is a, a, something you can't ignore. Um, I guess the big question, though, and this is, goes to our soft power survey, when are we going to see, Tom and Francine, a, a global Chinese brand in the retail space? Uh, when are we going to see a proper Chinese luxury brand? Um, are they going to be able to, you know, a, a car that yeah, is going to really go up against a BMW or an Audi that we'd want to drive? Yeah, uh, Tyler, we need to get you back to talk about that. I also love the fact that you spend a little bit of time looking at uh, the other half, right, the spouses. Do we underestimate? You have Melania Trump, number one, Philip May, number two, and then you go on to Brigitte Macron and the others. Um, for those of you on radio, it's a fun read. It's, it's in the monocle and basically ranks the power of the spouse. So, Tyler, do we underestimate their influence? I think we do. It's, you know, it's, it is always a sideshow. It's always that sort of soft third story. It's always the, you know, the page seven or eight story when there's a major world event. But I think that you know, we, we've certainly seen uh, you know, uh, when we've had uh, you know, Mrs. Macron, uh, when she's graced the cover of, of, of magazines, you know, even outside of this market, um, you, you, see, you see a bit of a hit. Um, and I, I think it's, it, it is essential. It becomes part of, you know, everyone wants a total package these days. Um, and, and it's a shame sometimes that it's still, you know, from the news desk point of view, it's, uh, it's a bit down page.